As you can see, sometimes I find some really good stuff at some really good prices. Welcome to today's video. I am the Dollar Bin Diver. And as my name suggests, I hunt for comic books in dollar bins, 50 cent bins, and really any kind of discount bin. Today I'll be showing off a massive haul of comics from one of my favorite comic shops, which is Heroes Realm, located in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, they have an awesome dollar bin section. Uh, as you can see in the video here, uh, they have more than just just dollar bin comics all kinds of different collectibles but look at that dollar bin selection uh, uh, they keep it alphabetized as best as possible uh, and it really makes it easier for me to find the titles I'm looking for you may notice a few trends as we go alright so I'm also gonna talk about my bourbon choice of the day all right, and that is going to be the Maker's Mark 46 Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. So, barrel finished with 10 French Oak Staves. Uh, of course, it's a 94 proof. All right, let's do a little pour here. All right. So, Makers has been one of my top kind of sort of budget bourbons. Um, they're kind of a mid, midway, especially the 46. Uh, a little darker color than some of them I've been sampling here lately. Uh, and as you can tell from the bottle, I have drank from it some as well. Hmm, good oak oaky smell to it. A little caramel maybe. Some sweeter notes. Hmm. Alright. <laughs> I don't really know uh, what else to say in there. Good oak. Good sweetness to it. <laughs> a little burn on the first sample if I go a little too much. <laughs> Alright, so back to the comics though. As you see here, we have The Invincible Iron Man, issue number 430. This is the disassembled prologue. Um, as I mentioned, they uh, keep their bins fairly alphabetized. So I was able to find another Invincible Iron Man, issue 431. Kind of going right along with that, jumping into the disassembled event. And I was able to find issue 432. Uh, I actually don't know as much about this this storyline, but I, I think I had one or two other issues in that, so that'll be a fun one to jump into. All right, set that to the side. So we're moving on with another run that I was able to find a couple of issues on. And I was really excited because they were sort of filling in some gaps. Uh, this um, this run of Immortal Iron Fist, uh, I believe there were 28, 29 issues. And I am now missing just one or two issues from that run. As you can see here, issue number 22, nice little cover. And now this one, this cover. <laughs> That's an awesome little battle right there. Issue number 26, as you can see, of the Immortal Iron Fist. Now, kind of in that same realm, this is the Immortal Weapons. Issue 1 of 5, Fat Cobra. <laughs> Issue 3 of 5, Dog Brother number 1. Issue 4 of 5, Tiger's Beautiful Daughter. And issue 5 of 5, Prince of Orphans. Uh, this little mini run kind of ties in with the Immortal Iron Fist, or I guess it's kind of a branch off as some of these characters are introduced uh, during that, that run. 
and I don't know that I have that other issue, but finding four of the five issues, I could not pass it up. So. Continuing on with runs of comics, or mini runs of comics, I was able to get a good chunk of. Here is The Adventures of the Thing. This is issue number one. If it's not one thing, it's another. All right. And I was able to find issue number two. What is this one? Ah, versus the original Ghost Rider. That should be fun. Issue number three, featuring the Avengers. You mean these jokers? <laughs> Plus, all new, meet Ben's babes. And then to complete it, is issue number four. Right, and is that man thing on the cover there? Getting a little more love now, after that Halloween, uh, uh, event on from MCU on Disney Plus so this was a great find issues 1 through 4 of this mini run uh, and as you can tell a lot of the comics in their bins are not not all bagged and boarded uh, but they are generally a good find for a dollar so continuing with the thing though here's Marvel 2 and 1 featuring the thing and hmm <laughs> I thought I saw the last one of these creeps long ago, but I was wrong. I don't know. But I didn't have this issue of that run, so of course I had to grab it. Continuing on with the West Coast Avengers. That is issue number two. This was filling in um, a gap there for me. Wonder Man there on the cover. And issue number 28. Again, I was able to fill in a few gaps from a West Coast Avengers run. Um, at a dollar each, zero hour for Zodiac. Issue number 68. I'll angle that one. There we go. The Reaper and the Robot. Robot Holocaust? Hmm. But uh, looks like we have a good lineup of the West Coast Avengers there on the cover. Trying to come to someone's rescue. Okay, moving on. Issue number 74. Another great cover there with uh, the lineup of the West Coast Avengers. Okay, and one or two more here. Issue number 80. This is part two of Operation Galactic Storm. And uh, this is actually one of just a couple issues I'm missing or have been missing from that Galactic Storm event. So that's exciting to have this almost that almost completed. And I believe this is the last of the West Coast Avengers from this this haul. This is the 1993 annual. This is the eighth one. Starring War Machine. Introducing Raptor. Foul Prey. All of this and Ultron. Alright. So that was a great that was a great finds to fill in some gaps of that run for me. <clears throat> Moving on though to the Mighty Thor. Call him Mayhem, call him Mongoose. <laughs> it had to happen. Guest starring The Amazing Spider-Man. I believe this is issue 391. Uh, this was obviously one that I did not have. Uh, I, have I have gone a little crazy and tried to collect as many of the Thor in this area as possible. Of course, there are a few keys that will be out of my dollar bin range, but... I'm going to find great, great covers like this, especially. I have to grab them. Moving on to a newer run, Battleworld Thors, issue number two. Uh, I believe I actually have issue one, four. I don't know if I have three or not. I'm going to have to inventory those and find out. But uh, I figured uh, why not jump into this run since I have a couple at the beginning there. And then back into the main run. This is the Mighty Thor, Lord of Asgard. Uh, I don't remember what issue this is right off, and uh, I guess this came from a Half Price Brooks, uh, well, a collection which is originally came from Half Price Books, and of course they put it right over the sticker. So we're going to cheat. We're going to open up the front cover here, and let's see... This is from volume two, obviously. 
issue number 52 interesting I don't know what the legacy numbering on that is right off but the Lord of Asgard I, I believe I have some in that era area so perhaps I can ha have some consecutive comics for a good read so continuing on this was a anytime I find Power Man and Iron Fist in the dollar bins I, I have to grab it and uh, thankfully I did not have this one already I have no idea what's going on but uh, I don't know not early Power Man and Iron Fist issue 93 from 1983 let's see if we can get in on that so always nice to find some I guess bronze Power Man and Iron Fist okay moving on to the Avengers uh, this is from 1997, issue number 7, from, I want to say this is volume 2, where Rob Liefeld came in and uh, tried to help reboot and revitalize the Avengers run. Uh, here lately I've started trying to collect that run. I believe it's around 12 issues. Tw around 12 issues. Um, and then in 98 we get volume three with yet another reboot so I, fi I figured why not grab those some a nice little Rob Liefeld collection so that filled in a nice little gap with it alright so I believe here we are with volume number three by Busiek this is issue number twelve of Earth's Mightiest Heroes The Avengers um, I, I, even though the art styles may be drastically different I, I enjoy both of them and uh, kind of hoping to collect uh, a good chunk of both of them and have a good stories there. As you see here, we have issue number 14. Guess who? <laughs> All right, now, some newer run of the Avengers. Uh, this is Mark, part of Mark Wade's run, issue 672. Uh, I, I believe I may actually have this comic already, but I feel like every time I see it, I have to grab it because I love that cover. <clears throat> Just the detail in the artwork, the story of the Aven the all new Avengers trying to keep these worlds from colliding. <laughs> all right, as as you can see at the top, worlds collide part one side by side with the champions. All right, going back a little bit to 1986. This is issue. Well, this is the 15th annual of the Avengers. Uh, I don't know if there's any key significance with this. It's a reader copy, as you can tell, but I am a sucker for these annuals. Uh, oftentimes, they're a little more square bound. More pages, more story, more bang for your buck. <laughs> All right. Now, back into the new Avengers, the reunion. This is part two of four. Uh, I know I have issue number one and issue number four, and I may be missing issue number three. I will have to, I have to find out when I inventory this with those. So, I'm excited to have that little mini run completed. Uh, I don't know if it mainly touches on the on Ronan or or what exactly, but I've, he's on the cover of the other issues for me. So, that's actually what interested me in grabbing that little mini run. So back into the new avengers by bendis here's issue number 13 and speaking of ronan here he is on the cover of some nunchucks <laughs> causing some chaos i guess <laughs> that should be fun to read Let's see what's going on all right there by uh, issue number 19 as well the new avengers by bendis uh see the uh iron spider there in the top corner just an awesome cover really overall and then issue number 56 I believe this is still in that run by Bendis uh, I do you know this one being past issue 33 means it has to be volume 1 and I think I'm bouncing around a little bit but here is issue number 37 also the new Avengers title by Bendis um, <laughs> just a dark gritty cover there but I'm excited to give these a good read all right now moving on to jonathan hickman's run of the new avengers 
This is issue number 16, Point Now. Uh, issue number one, I don't know how that works in that run. I don't know if it had a new story technically. I'm not for sure. I'll, maybe if I get to read a little further into that, I can let you know. Now, this was one of my favorite finds of the day, even though it is a little beat up. This is Earth's Mightiest Heroes, issue number 469, uh, this is by Busiek. Uh, as you can see there on the cover, though, Kang with his iconic sword. Um, I forget the exact key significance. Uh, it has something to do with one of the major battles, and uh, it's just an awesome cover for me. And uh, knowing how popular, how big Kang is potentially going to get, it uh, excites me to <laughs> find that in a dollar bin. All right. So let me. Actually, I've got a couple more I want to add to this. Moving on to Marvel Triple Action, starring the Avengers. Let's see if I can angle that. All right. This is issue 47 from that run. Deliver us from the masters of evil. Uh, as you can see, we have some of the Avengers there, and uh, I guess this is when the Black Knight was uh, on the side of evil and not the side of good. <laughs> um, as most of you may know, the Marvel Triple Action was a, a run of reprints, basically. Uh, and even though this was from 1979, these... These are just great little reprints of some of the early Avengers titles. Uh, I don't remember what issue number that these are right off, but here is also issue number 16. See Captain America's sensational bout battle with Power Man. The Road Back. Also, a surprise team of villains whom you never expected to see in this issue. Uh, as you can, I see Enchantress there as well, so... That is quite intriguing. All right. And one more from the reprint titles here. This is Marvel's Greatest Comics, starring the Fantastic Four. His mis mission, destroy the Fantastic Four. Uh, I am not sure what this, what issue of the Fantastic Four this reprints without jumping into it. Um, it's kind of hard to keep up with them all, but... If these are fun a lot of times if you find them in dollar bins they are reader copies so I don't feel as bad about jumping into them I'm giving them a good read getting to see these old stories reprinted and considering these are still from the 70s and 80s I guess these are technically bronze or maybe even silver depending on how you define those ages <laughs> alright and I guess I have one Iron Man that slipped through the cracks on me this is issue number 326, The Second Coming of Tony Stark. First sign. So, The Invincible Iron Man there from 1996. Alright, set these to the set. Now, to jump into my massive stack of Spider-Man. Here he is. Oh, let me adjust that a little bit. Here's what I shall do. All right. The all-new, all-daring Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man. He who is without sin. As you can see, this is issue 109. And I was able to find uh, several in this title. And I believe these are newsstand editions, which is always nice to find. Issue 129 here. The final showdown with the foreigner not sure anything about that character but we have a nice black suit spidey cover there okay continuing in a little later into the spectacular spider-man run but an, a nice little air there this is issue 182 vermin the goblin spider in the middle okay and the last of my spectacular spider-man this is the third, King Size Annual. 
featuring the startling final fate of Manwolf, Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, I, I don't know if this comic has any key significance, but as you can tell, it is a, a little bit of a reader copy. But I did not have it, so I had to grab it. Okay, moving on to the next Spider-Man. Next Spider-Man title here. Web of Spider-Man, issue number six. Good news is the Beyonder has turned this skyscraper into solid gold. Bad news, there are still people trapped inside. Don't miss Gold Rush. <laughs> Secret Wars 2 continues in this issue. So, I actually have the completed Secret Wars 2 event in some of the tie-ins, and it is in my, my stack to read. <laughs> so I may have to add that to, to my tie-ins there. All right, Web of Spider-Man, issue number 45, Victims of the Vulture. A wild little cover there, and a new stand as well. Excited to add these, filling in some gaps in my Web of Spider-Man run. Here is issue number 47. On this one, Inferno continues. The Hobgoblin returns, and it is The Awakening. That is a, an awesome little cover there with the Hobgoblin clinching Spider-Man. <laughs> All right, issue number 49 of Web of Spider-Man. Corner business. <laughs> no idea. Awesome little cover there. Just some nice, sharp artwork of Spidey. Web of Spider-Man, issue 51. Save me, Spider-Man. Don't let him kill me. Wolves bite back. I know nothing about this story, but I do enjoy the artwork and filling in some gaps for me. So maybe if there is a consecutive story there, I can have a good read. All right, the non-mutant superhero. Uh, I believe in that in that time there was uh, some trademark issues with the words mutant and all the heroes being mistaken as human as mutants so they had to add that non-mutant <laughs> asterisk there as you see showdown and so many villains there on the cover with spidey so that should be a fun little read all right moving on with issue number 56 the rocket racer is back just in time for a stunt riot this, uh, I believe this is one of those villains who, uh, <laughs> did not make it too, too far into the continuing stories. All right. I hear the grizzly coming, coming down the track. Hmm. Awesome little cover though. When you take a look at it, all red and black using that, that difference in the colors to create depth and detail. Okay, issue number 72, New York's non-mutant neurotic superhero. Oh, goodness. While Dominic Fortune must wrestle with, uh, wrestle with ghosts from his mysterious past, Spidey and Silver Sable must battle the terrors of today. This is part two of two. I don't recall if I have issue number one, but if so, that should be great. See why Dominic Fortune demands neo-Nazis must die. Interesting. I, this is a, an interesting... There's a few things about this I'm really curious about. I uh, really hope I have issue 71 and we'll give those a read here soon. Moving on though, here is issue 76. Art Attack, part 4 of 4. The Spidey Bust Loose. Uh, guest starring the Fantastic Four. Oops. All right, my enemy's enemy, part two of four. This is issue ninety-eight, and I believe that is from nineteen ninety-two. Continuing on, slugfest of the soulscape. This is an Infinity Crusade crossover, plus Nightwatch versus Death Grin. Interesting, and that is issue number one hundred five. And uh, as I said. I was able to gain, gain gain quite a few from a few different runs. My Spider-Man collection grew quite a bit during this haul of comics. 
So here is issue number 106. This is also an Infinity Crusade crossover, guest starring Strong Guy, Far Firestar, and Puck, plus Nightwatch versus Death Grin, the final battle. <laughs> okay, moving on to issue 121, Web of Life, part three of four. And this is Kane versus the Scarlet Spider. That is the direct edition, and as well as a newsstand. I could not pass that up. Now, backtracking to the earlier parts of Web of Spider-Man, issue number 11. Uh, for me, that was one of my favorite covers I found for the day. That black suit, the purple background, just, oh, just a great little cover there. <laughs> All right, how about this? Let me take these off the board. Moving on with the Marvel Tales, starring Spider-Man. This is issue number 168, reprinting for the first time ever, Amazing Spider-Man number 29. Uh, so, as you can tell, Marvel Tales was another reprint title. I believe there were some original stories in there, but many of the issues were reprints, which for me is great because those early ASM are nearly impossible to find in dollar bins, although I have acquired several. <laughs> All right, whatever you do, wherever you go, never step on a scorpion. Okay. And moving on with issue 205. Starring Spider-Man and Havoc. Between the Pharaoh and the Force. I'm not sure if this is reprinting anything particular. But it is uh, an awesome little cover there. Alright, continuing on though. Issue 210. Spidey goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Tarantula. Plus, the Marvel... What? The Marvel Balls and an all-new Spider-Ham story. Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, for me, I like this cover with the tarantula. It reminds me of uh, the spectacular Spider-Man issue number one. Okay. Moving on, though. This is issue 249. Featuring Spider-Man and Namor the Submariner. Forget Doc Ock. Spidey and Marvel's first and mightiest mutant must face... The, the men fish of Dr. Dorcas. All right. <laughs> Plus, how Spider-Man's spider sense works. That's actually an awesome little issue there because of that. All right. Continuing with issue 273. The tragic secret of Mary Jane's past revealed. Plus, the hobgoblin on the loose. Uh, I'm not sure what this reprints or which story, but I'm actually quite intrigued by this one. Okay, moving on here. Spidey's back in black. Marvel Tales featuring Spider-Man. What has six legs, four eyes, and an attitude? The Spectacular Spider-Kid. <laughs> I have no idea what to think on this comic, but that one should be a fun, fun read. All right, now for the last comic of today's haul, I'm actually going back to the beginning of the Marvel Tales run here with issue number 41 starring Spider-Man. Ah, oh, come on. I'll take on any super baddie, but how can one man fight the whole blinking army? Three guesses while we call this story disaster. Um, I have no idea what's going on with that story, but it's always great to find these early um, Spider-Man comics, even if they are reprints, uh, whether it be bronze or perhaps silver, depending on how you define the comic ages. I believe there's still a little debate on that. Okay, now, to show you the completed haul to finish up, here we have this stack, and the rest of the stack <laughs> all right so I might have gone a little a little crazy with my 
my haul this time, but I do not get to visit this comic shop as it is out of town for me, but I always have to check it out, give them a good look. Um, as you can see, sometimes I find some really good stuff at some really good prices. Well, I thank you for watching. I'm going to go finish enjoying my bourbon. I'm going to go enjoy some of these comics. Have a great day. Please like, subscribe, and uh, thank you again.